Uh, one of the greatest things that I've seen is seeing other kids do things that they love to do. I remember mentioning this at our meeting tonight when we uh, finally had our elections, and, and that's one of the advice, greatest pieces of advice that I can give you, as students especially, because this, this is all about students here, and this is where we can really make an impact, um, and especially along with our distinguished speakers for you guys definitely taking your time, having your dearly busy schedules, um, and I'm sure that you have them. Uh, we thank you dearly for attending this and being a part of something great. Right now, we have 13 schools involved in the coalition. Oh, I forgot I have this. 13 schools. So right now, currently, there are seven of us. So I'd like all the students to stand up and uh, you know, give us a round of applause. Thank you guys for coming out. <clears throat> you know, I think, I think what's great, you know, as we get older, we're inspired by younger people, you know, because I think there's this sort of uh, concept of innocence, you know, idea of growth, you know, new ideas that we can really bring to the table. And I think by forming a national organization for Tigers, and by collaborating with all of us from across the country, this is something where we can really do something great, especially along with the experts and the advice that we have. And once again, I thank you dearly for coming, for those of us who distinguished guests. So I'd like to go through a list. Um, for those of us who aren't here to attend, um, unfortunately they weren't able to make it for this first annual National Tiger for Tiger Summit, but I'd like to point out the few that are not here today. Auburn University, uh, for us of Clemson, they are our rivals, so there's a little bit of uh, tension there on the football field, but off the football field we're together. You know, they have a great group over there, and they have been with us uh, from the beginning within our steering committee meetings. Um, Princeton University, we've had a girl named by Rene Rebecca Haynes. Uh, she's very interested in wildlife management, and unfortunately she wasn't be able to come here, but she's getting actively involved. We also heard back from another group at Princeton, uh, a variety of graduate students, if I'm correct, that also want to establish an organization and connection to Tigers. And hopefully we can connect Rebecca with her so they can establish a full-grown organization there at Princeton and give us a presence there. Um, Colorado College, I'd really like to point out this, this, this college in particular, um, I spoke with a girl, um, and she is part of a pre-vet club. Um, she wants to go to veterinary school, but I spoke with her about our goals and our mission as a national coalition. She got super fired up. She got super excited. So what did she decide to do? She decided to start her own organization. She started her own organization for Tigers for Tigers. She's currently got 10 members, and she's actually having a Tiger Symposium at her school on April 30th. So within a short amount of time, uh, probably about a month, she got all this done. So I think that's what inspires me. And this is just my personal experience, and I wish all of you the same. You know, we got to find something that really inspires students to us to collaborate on a scale and bounce ideas together as well. SUNY Cobbeskill is a, a state school in New York, and he's a very interested individual. He's also been in contact with us, and unfortunately, the, the funding issue fell through. RIT has also been of great, great support from the beginning, and along with Hampton as well. So I really want, again, like to thank everybody who's with us here today. And this is, this is really a start to something great. You know, we're, this is an opportunity for us to collaborate. And I think, I, I say that a lot, collaboration, but the reason is because based upon my experience as a, as a college kid, even though I am an only 22-year-old kid, um, I find that's where success is among students. And so I thank you for all of you for coming along. So why us? I've, I've sort of reiterated these points before, but I just want to hit them again. We are the ideas for change. I think that's one of, the, one of the biggest things we're pushing here. Our innocence and our drive and our eagerness to do something allows us to have those concepts. Also, as college students, we have access to resources, right? This is one of the greatest points in our careers where you can go to professors, we can learn from our experiences, make connections. And with those resources, we can do something great. So students, I ask of you, as you progress with this organization and also back at your colleges and your respective groups, to get in touch with your professors, get to know those individuals, those points of contact, so you can really build something off and build something great. Passion and energy. I've already reiterated, I've already spoke of this, but I think this is our drive. I think this is something, you know, I've met tons of people throughout my career as college kids from back at home. I've had people start NGOs, I've had people film documentaries in Haiti, and that's inspiring. So once again, when you see somebody who loves what they do, and they have a passion for something, that's what's driving us more forward. And, and, you know, a, a lot of us might be related to wildlife or biology as students, but that's not, that's not what it's about. We, we like to include students from all across the diverse groups of different majors, of different backgrounds, because that's what conservation is, right? 
It has nothing to do with, well, obviously it has everything to do with biology and uh, conservation. Let me back up a second here for uh, all of you guys correct myself. Um, but it's much more about building connections on, on an interdisciplinary level. You know, we need, we need those econ majors. We need those accountants. We need the, the public advocacy groups and those students who are in communication. Uh, we need, the, obviously, the, the backgrounds from wildlife management and that sort of thing. So this is such more than just a group of biology students sitting together in a room. It's much more than that. So we hope that you know, we find those individuals as well and can build upon each other as students and to collaborate with organizations as well to get involved in a variety of incentives or initiatives. Why now? There's nine subspecies, and there's a fourth, the fourth one is uh, considered to be extinct in the wild. Three of them are gone. Right, so there's obviously, as all of you are aware, there's a variety of issues going on with tigers internationally and also here in the United States. With less than 3,200 tigers scattered throughout, um, scattered throughout their range, um, that's a big concern. And obviously those points were, were hit in the video. Habitat loss, poaching, and revenge killing are still present. There's, you know, poaching is one of the biggest concerns. Luckily enough, a lot of organizations are working together to promote um, or to prevent uh, poachers with their, their legal trafficking trade, especially with the U.S. State Department and Hillary Clinton's initiative back in December as well. And I think that's a great drive and something we can look forward to as well. And, you know, a lot of the, the, uh, the meetings that occurred, I think it was in Russia, am I right? Where they, they, they made that new thought of let's double the, tig the size of the tiger population in the wild by 2022, right? That was one of the goals that came out of that St. Petersburg meeting. Is that, is that correct? Okay. Um, <clears throat> and the fact is, you know, there's an eminent thought that tigers can go extinct within the next 12 years or decade. And that's scary. But this is a time. This is a time when we have a, gr a group of eager students from multiple schools across the country to do something about it. You know, this is the first organization where we have students. You know, it's a great opportunity that there's, that there's organizations among us, uh, the distinguished speakers that are willing to sit with us here today and to give their advice and share their advice with us as speakers. And so with our commitment to this cause and to promote conservation on multiple levels, you know, this is a fabulous thing. So the goals for the summit. We want to formally establish a national organization organized by students devoted to conserving tigers. We want to expose students to the conservation needs and things that we can do, um, get involved with with a variety of initiatives and make that onto a national scale. So uh, first of all, I'd like everybody in the Creative Inquiry team who's been with us for the past year, if you guys would like to stand up, and I'd like to say a special congratulations to you and also Dr. Tonkin and Louie, if you would like to stand up as well. Um, and Barbara Spiegel. And this is a group of students that, that two years, majority of us went to India. We had a wonderful experience with India, uh, thanks to Anjana and Dr. David Tonkin and Louis as well. And we all came back and were thrilled. We were very excited to get to involved and do something. So that's when we came back with the help of Barbara Spuziel and her staff. We got involved in the Creative Inquiry team. And so the purpose of this team was to find a way, you know, how can we expand out? How can we take our club here at Clemson? and get more students involved on a national scale. So once again, I thank you guys dearly for all the support and all your hard work for putting this together. Um, it's been an absolute blast. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Dr. David Tonkin. And uh, thank you very much, guys. <laughs>